devices. Uh, let us uh, focus on the topic that, that uh, people have been asking me to discuss today, and that is, uh, you, you can imagine the conversation, some are up in Oldham, you know, Gary, Gary, I'm pregnant. Ah, you stupid bitch, you told me we should have had back sex. Um, and um, and that is that is, of course, the issue of back sex. So what is the evolutionary psychology of back sex? Why are people attracted to back sex? Why do people wish to have back sex? Um, really, you can trace the, this back to the fact that our most common ancestors, the chimpanzee, the, our common ancestors, or sorry, our most closest relatives with whom we have a common ancestor, the chimpanzees and the bonobos, um, they engage in back sex. When do they do so? Well, mainly in the context of shows of dominance. So if there is tension, if there is a fight, what the hell is back sex, says Justin Kumerle. Back sex is anal sex, sodomy, buggery. Good. Um, so um, I'll just start again. Um, if we chase it back to our most recent, um, our most close relative, our closest relatives, that is, of course, the chimpanzees and the bonobos. The chimpanzees and the bonobos both engage in acts of sodomy, and they mainly do so in the context of dominance hierarchies. That is to say that um, two males get into a fight and the other male doesn't want to get killed. And someone in the chat is referencing prison sex. Indeed, this is perhaps the point. Um, someone in uh, who is of slightly lower status, who is less physically strong, does not want to get killed. And so he deals with this by making himself into the female, by symbolically becoming female, by doing what bonobo, female bonobos and female chimpanzees do when they want to have sex, which is bending over uh, and thus presenting their buttocks and by extension uh, their vaginas. He makes himself into the female and this kind of diffuses the situation. He's saying uh, symbolically to the more dominant male, I am submissive, I do, do as you wish to me. Uh, and this of course calms down, this renders less angry the dominant male. The dominant male may simply, in the chimpanzee world, may simply accept that, or more often than not, he seems to mount the, and indeed penetrate anally, the submissive male. And, um, and we don't know if he ejaculates into him, we're not sure, but he certainly mounts him and perhaps penetrates him. And this diffuses tension among these two uh, among these two, uh, these two chimpanzees or these two bonobos, and therefore it it stops there from being serious violence, serious disorder, and death. And of course, they are highly pro-social animals, and this means uh, that community order is restored. This appears to be, therefore, just like prison. The Irish chain is saying, indeed, this be, appears to be the ultimate origins of buggery among humans. Now, how does this then relate to why? Uh, heterosexual couples uh, would like to engage in um, anal sex. Well, the first thing that we see is that it is the male that likes it very considerably more than the female. There are a certain kind of female that like it, and we'll look at that in a minute, but it is the male that likes it considerably more than the female. Why? Because in our prehistory, Dominance and violence and sex are fused. Um, in prehistory, if a man uh, in a very, very uh, unstable R strategy ecology, ultimately the way that a man is able to successfully have sex with a woman is to overpower that woman, whether on a one-on-one -on -one basis or as part of some kind of gang. And indeed, in a very unstable and dangerous ecology, the only way that a woman can really tell if a man um, has the kind of genes that she would wish to pass on, i.e. if he will produce children who will be adapted to that kind of ecology, i.e. those that will be extremely violent and dangerous and aggressive and so forth, is if he can overpower her. So this leads to a fusion, particularly among our strategists, but also very much more so among men, among a between, a, a, with, with sex and violence. And this is why men, when they watch violent pornography, become more aroused and ejaculate more. And it is why men, when they engage in rape, um, tend to ejaculate more, partly because of the violence fusion, which makes it more arousing, and partly because rape in prehistory tended to occur in a context of gang rape, and therefore you have to compensate for the gang rape element by 
producing more semen to give yourself more of a chance in sperm competition. But the point is that it, there is this fusion among men of, of power, violence and sex. Uh, and so it follows that a man will become very, very sexually aroused and he will be attracted to um, uh, sodomy of, of a woman because it, it, it places him in a position of utter dominance. It is a violent, dominant thing to do. It is that act of chimpanzee, that primal act of chimpanzee bonobo dominance and violence. Um, and 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 we would be evolved to really like doing that and to want to do that because it would because because of this fusion of the need for status in 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 these kinds of animals. Um, uh, it's, there's no point saying it sounds like a beta thing, Brent Harrington. It's not. A, how can it be a beta thing? It's an act of primal dominance, and that act of primal dominance is um, extremely useful uh, in prehistory, and therefore it follow it follows uh, that that would be associated with being sexually aroused particularly for men, because the man would need to show in prehistory uh, that he was the most dominant kind of man and that he could dominate the females and all of that kind of stuff. And so therefore you can see why males would be attracted to anal sex with females, because it, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is plugging back into that, into that prehistoric primal dominance hierarchy that is based around buggery. Um, and therefore, and therefore, it would make him extremely aroused because he's utterly dominant over the fee utter over the female. Um, now, consistent with this, of course, females in general do not particularly like. Um, uh, females in general do not particularly like uh, having anal sex, um, and and they will and they will tend only to have them in the context of a um, of a of a, of a you know, status of, of a of a very very close relationship. They 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 they, they generally won't want to have them uh, ha have it at all. Um, but if they do, uh, then it's a very very specific kind of female that's involved. But before looking at that, let's look at the uh, consistent with my theory. There was another study involving Scott Barry Kaufman, I can't remember the name of the study off the top of my head, which showed that essentially uh, being interested in anal sex is an expression of a fast life history strategy. Uh, fast life history strategy, of course, is about power, it's about dominance, it's an unstable, dangerous environment in which you'd have no social bonds with anybody and you must reach the top of the hierarchy. And so, and that's, of course, what the, the ultimate expression of that is um, is anal sex. It's 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 uh, it, so so fast LHS is so PP is power and dominance is associated with liking anal sex. As is sociosexuality. That is to say, a person that has lots of sexual partners and whatever that's promiscuous. Well, that be, being promiscuous is part of the uh, uh, fast life history strategy suite of traits. So sociosexuality is associated, of course, therefore, with, with liking anal sex, um, as is low agreeableness. Again, that this is part of the fast LHS power dominance uh, rather than bonding and love uh, suite of traits, uh, as is low conscientiousness. So all of these things, essentially a fast life history strategy uh, predicts liking uh, anal sex as a man. As a woman, um, the research indicates that the, the key predictor of a woman actually enjoying anal sex, actually wanting anal sex, rather than doing it as, as, a, as a favor for the man, because the, the man wants it, um, in one study was that the, the only predictor actually was that she'd had, was that by the age of 25, or between the age of 18 and 25, uh, she had had more than four sexual partners, or four, four or more sexual partners by the time she was 25 or younger. That was the big predictor of woman wanting anal sex. Now, this again shows you why would she want that? Well, from the evolutionary perspective, uh, it, it would be a, a, such a woman would want to be dominated. She would want to be with a man that would show her uh, dominance. Um, and this is the kind of the, the ultimate way of doing so. So um, that, that would be, it's the four more sexual partners. Now, interestingly, there is an increase in the amount of anal sex going on between heterosexual couples. So this study, for, I mean, if you go back about 30 years, 10%, less than 10% of women had ever uh, had uh, anal sex. Um, and as we move forward between 2005 and 2010, the percentage of women between the ages of 18 and 25 who had experienced anal sex increased from 27% in 2005 to 36%. And I read somewhere, I forget which um, 
which uh, study it was, that, that more recent studies indicate it's now increased to 50 percent, which which I guess would be consistent with um, aspects of the society becoming more fast life history strategy or whatever, that there is an increase in anal sex. So there you go. I hope that um, that uh, so I think bestiality is legal in Finland, says Ward Upton, the miserable conformist. I can tell you, having consulted a, a, a lawyer uh, for, a, for a company that makes computer games in Olu, uh, they have a, an in-house lawyer, and he informed me that bestiality is indeed legal in Finland. And it's one of the few places where bestiality is legal. There is no law against bestiality in Finland. So there you go. Hello, hello, hello! The Jolly Heretic is an online public house which meets on Mondays and Thursdays at 7pm UK time, 2pm New York, in which we discuss the kind of based, fearless science which is increasingly expunged from our woke, joke universities. If you would like to help the Jolly Heretic public house, and there are many ways you can do so, please, please, please become one of my patrons on Subscribestar. Also, if you want to, you can donate to the channel uh, using Odyssey and Entropy, and you can also purchase Jolly Heretic merchandise, such as as, uh, shirts and mugs. All of the links are in the description. Again, I'd be most violently grateful if you could assist the Jolly Heretic Public House, and I will see you all soon, and goodbye!